Yo, hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel and another edition of Did You See That? And today I'm actually joined by an awesome guest who, firstly, I just want to take the time out to thank to actually just come onto this stream, whether you're watching live with us or whether you're watching after the fact. So my guest today is Miles, and I'm trying to say his name right, Dolek? Doliak, yes, sir. Doliak, awesome. So Miles, how are you doing today? I'm well, Mike, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. And also, as I say, uh, thank you for sparing your time to talk to me um, because I recently got to check out your brand new movie coming out. Is it October 14th or 15th? 15th, yes, sir. That's right. Yeah, I thought so. And I'm going to be releasing my review on Monday because I've got like an early screener, so I've got a chance to watch this early. And man, I love this film. I thought that it was an easy watch. I also thought that it was a really pleasant surprise because I felt like it took darker turns at odd points than others. Mm. Uh, I'm going to break that down. Um, so, uh, Miles, so one question I like to kind of ask in terms of like an icebreaker to start things off is if you could have been in any 80s or 90s movie, which movie would that be and why? Wow. That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> if I could have been in any 80s or 90s movie, which one would it be and why? Um, I, you know, I think immediately uh, a couple of films come to mind that were really significant for me uh, in, in my college years and immediately thereafter. Two David Fincher films, Seven and Fight Club. Uh, no. I, think, I, I think I would have... Um, died to be a part of either one of those uh, projects. It's such a uh, great script, brilliant direction by Fincher. I love this, that seventh script, the Andrew Kevin Walker script. Um, and I feel like I saw them at a really um, formative time, sort of in my creative journey. So I think right. it would have, it would have been one of them. I mean, I love Pulp Fiction too. Um, going thinking back on the eighties, I mean, good fellows. I mean, Hell, Raiders of the Lost Ark was 1981, right? So that's that's a pretty good one, also. Uh, so that's that's kind of a, a short list. Uh, but any of those masterful films, I would have I would have been very very pleased to be a part of. Awesome, yeah, and some really cool choices there as well, and quite a diverse range as well. Mm. I would say, especially with Seven and Indiana Jones. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so, Miles, this movie, Demigod. So, for people who haven't heard of this as of right now, again, I got to check this out as an early screener, thanks to Gravitas Ventures. So, I was very thankful to those guys for who I got to see it. So, for anyone who doesn't know what Demigod is, what is Demigod around? So, Demigod is the story of Robin, a woman who travels with her husband, Leo, to her birthplace in the Black Forest of Germany. Uh, after her deceased estranged grandfather has left her all of his worldly possessions. And Robin and Leo arrive at her grandfather Carl's cabin in the Black Forest, only to realize that the inheritance she's been left is far more complicated than she bargained for, and things sort of go downhill from there. Right. Awesome. So <laughs> one thing I've just got to add to that straight away is the leads in this is your hands, Miles and Rachel Nichols. Is that right? That is correct. Yep. Awesome. So I've actually never seen either of those in a movie or TV before, although I know Rachel Nichols has been in quite a fair bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I admire in this movie is the chemistry between both of those. I just felt like it radiated off the screen, but also kept you like interested in, okay, where's this going and which direction is this movie going to go in? So how did the idea of Demigod come to you? Well, uh, we were working, I was working with the same production team, producing team uh, that did my last film, The Dinner Party, Li myself, Ooh. Lindsay Ann Williams, Wesley O'Mary, and James Boulian. Uh, after that film, which we really enjoyed working on, we wanted to do something uh, very quickly, uh, get something up and running to sort of capture the momentum we had generated on that film. And my co-writer on uh, Dinner Party, Michael Donovan Horn, had the frame of a script, which I think was called something like Witches of the Woods or something at the time. It was a, a, a wild hunt uh, narrative. And he he sent it over. We, we gave it a read, uh, started working on it together. Um, Lindsay also got involved, fellow producer, my partner in, in, in Matters Creative and also Life, and, and, and sort of zeroed in on the Kernunos 
cult in particular in the Kernunos mythology, uh, which I just thought was was utterly fascinating to explicitly name uh, the deity and and the cult that we were dealing with. And I, I've always been fascinated with vegetation deities in particular. Um, but these are the deities that govern human beings' ability to to till the land and grow things and and muster the beasts of the field and um, right. which are things, of course, that are are essential to their very survival. And um, if you cross one of these deities or, or and and their their providence in the natural world, very bad things can happen. Uh, you think of right. someone a deity like Dionysus turning people into vines or trees, and uh, well, Cernunos is typically. Um, a bit more benevolent in the lore, but we pushed him to a slightly more sinister place. And, um, and, and I thought it, it was the opportunity to ask a lot of other interesting questions about human beings relationship to the natural world and their, um, their seemingly incessant need accidentally or on purpose to damage it. And, and, and maybe what the, what this, these divine forces would have to say about that in response. Um, right. And then you mentioned Rachel and Johans. Wow. What, what an amazing, uh, two actors that we got to work with on this film and Rachel in particular, I've been a fan of for a very long time. And Johans is a friend who I've worked with on, on one of my other films called demons. And then we were in a uh, CW series called containment together. Uh, but I, I, I really appreciate what you said about the chemistry. They worked very hard on that. They were meeting on zoom and talking about this relationship even before we got to set. Um, so that, that meant a lot to them and to me. Um, that that relationship had to really work. It had to be meaningful. You had to see how deeply these two people cared about each other because it, it, it of course, makes what happens later on so much more impactful. Right. Yeah. And especially as you've mentioned about this whole law and kind of the surround of this backstory of the movie. Personally, I didn't know any of that. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. You've got to educate me a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, as I say, I think anyone who goes into this film, you know, whether they know about that or whether they don't, there's certainly something I think that everyone can kind of take away from this. Mm -hmm. And even if it's just the mystique that surrounds the film, because uh, one thing that I actually really admired about this movie, my ass, and I wanted to give you a big praise on, well, not just, you know, everything as well, but um, I really appreciate the kind of like the nature and the cinematography shots that was made in this. I just felt like, you know, whether that was, if you had an hour there, whether you had 14 hours, I don't know how much time, obviously, you know, we can find out in a second. Uh, but I just felt like that was utilised to its kind of full potential and it makes for some beautiful cinematography that's showcased throughout this movie. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about Rachel and your hands and how that casting kind of came together, the audition process? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for the kind words about the cinematography. And I, I will pass that along to my wonderful cinematographer, Nathan Tate. We spent a lot of time thinking about the look of this film and uh, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, so Rachel is, is somebody whose work that I, I had admired for quite some time. And, and we were looking for a name actor who could add a little profile to our project uh, for this. And our, our casting director, Brandy Goldman, had cast Rachel in something before and recommended Rachel and, and just right. sung Rachel's praises. What a wonderful human being she is. I knew she was a wonderful actor. I had seen her, of course, in Criminal Minds and Continuum and Star Trek and G.I. Joe and lots of other stuff. Uh, so we just reached out and we made an offer. We sent her the script. She really liked it. And, and fortunately, she was willing to take this leap of faith with us, which I was particularly gratified by, especially during COVID. This was her mm. first project uh, to do. Uh, after the pandemic broke out and that she was willing to take a chance on our comparatively small independent film and, and our team really meant a great deal to me. I mean, I knew, I knew from the first zoom meeting I had with Rachel, we hit it off that we were kindred spirits and I knew we were going to work together together uh, brilliantly. And then with Johans very, very early on, like I said, Johans is, I've had a relationship with prior. He's been in one of my films before. Um, he, he's a guy that's just, so genuine, such a talented actor, um, but at the same time, just such a, a, a good person and has such a great energy. And he's just the type of presence you want him on your set. He's just Mr. Positivity. He's game for anything. He's psyching everybody up. You know, he's, he's, 
he's a he's very much a leader, but at the same time, he's very much the type of guy that is like, I'm here to serve the director's vision. Miles, you tell me what you want, and I'm going to do everything within my power to deliver it. And so I'm a, an actor like that. I'm always looking for opportunities. Hey, how, what can I what can I write for Johans, or is there something in this for Johans? And as the script began to develop into something we felt like we could shoot and something that we felt was of a certain quality, I, I started thinking about Johans for that Leo role. And fortunately it worked out that he could do it. Right. Yeah. Awesome. And I definitely think like on this set as well, like, you know, his performance does radiate throughout the duration of the movie and whatever predicament it's in, whether it's a love scene, whether it's a scene where you just clearly see the uh, kind of scare on his face mm. and, Kind of shock, like you can definitely tell that radiates, and especially as you mentioned with COVID, and mm. you know that was Rachel's first project since you know the pandemic has hit. I'm assuming it might have been a couple of other people's first performances, yeah, since that time as well, right? Uh, was that the same for yourself? Uh, I had done one acting gig uh, during COVID on a film called Vanquish, which was a film directed by George Gallo yeah. that had Ruby Rose and Morgan Freeman, uh, but I certainly had not directed something during COVID. And um, I, I can't say it was it was always a pleasant experience. I mean, there were a lot of obstacles, a lot, a lot of logistical and, and budgetary hurdles that we had to overcome. Um, yeah. Obviously, we're adhering to the protocols that are handed down by our unions, which include testing three or four times a week and sanitation protocols and HEPA filtration in our indoor locales. Um, but, you know, we, we had a team that was committed um, to the end goal and just wouldn't wouldn't let anything deter them. You know, we, we, we had a COVID scare during shooting where an actor flew in from Los Angeles, tested positive before coming to set. So the protocols did work. Um, but that forced us to have to juggle the cast in the middle of the shoot, uh, which is harrowing on, a, on an independent film budget. Um, but ultimately, I think it worked out in the best interest of the film. It, 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 the eventuality of that was... Elena Sanchez was elevated to a larger role. She plays the role of Latara in the film. It turns out uh, Elena is a native German speaker. So uh, although we had, a, we had a German dialect coach, Oliver Hoffer out of New York, who's absolutely wonderful, he couldn't travel as a result of COVID. So we, we had both Ollie working remotely, and then now we had Elena on the ground, and we're all sequestered on, on, on this campground where we're shooting the film in cabins. Right. Um, so Elena's like, when I'm not shooting, I'm going to come to set. Let me, let me, uh, I want to listen to the German. Let me help you make, make sure you're, you're getting it right. Whether that's the German language or, or, or speaking English with German dialect. So those types of things happen where, where we would hit an obstacle, we would improvise and figure a way around it. And ultimately what we came up with w was maybe better than what we had in mind to begin with. It's one of those sort of necessity is the mother of invention type things. Sure. And it's so cool that Elena took her own time as well to teach German, mm. you know, because yeah. she didn't have to. Right, right. <laughs> um, and I guess in a sense, as you've said, with that actor who came before the set and tested positive, I guess it was kind of a blessing at the same time. It's, it's a bit of a strange one. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I mean, it was it was a terrifying. I mean, and, and you know, on, a, on an indie film, you can't push. You really, you can't buy your way out of a problem. You you just have to figure out how to keep moving forward, you know, and how to keep going. Right. And and obviously this this team, including the producers I mentioned earlier, Lindsay, Lindsay Wesley, Jim, our DP Nate Tape, our production designer, uh, Julie Tosh. I mean, they, they were they were just they said, look, let's let's figure it out and let's let's make it work. And we made it work. Um, yeah. and, and Elena is wonderful in the role and in the movie, and she was a real MVP of the shoot. So at the end of the day, um, I, I can't say, you know, I'm really pleased with how, how things turned out. Yeah, sure. Sure. And with this being a smaller budget movie, because, um, on my channel, as of late, I've showcased quite a few movie directors who have worked on like maybe their first feature or on a smaller scale back feature. And it's really cool to hear that these big actors or actresses, like Rachel, for example, are taking on like some smaller projects as well. Mm. Because you know, I, I can't speak for the actors and actresses. I don't know Hollywood at all. But some of them might have a mindset being like, "Right, I'm not doing this, or this is not to my pay grade." For example, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Um, but I just really appreciate the fact that you know Rachel took that time because she was brilliant as Robin. Uh, again, your hands. It's really cool to hear that behind the scenes. 
mm. is like a motivator for the rest of the cast because as you've said with covid that can certainly put a damper on maybe moods people might be like well i'm taking a big risk maybe going back to my family at the end of this shoot mm. i'm assuming those, those kind of thoughts go through mind on set um and did your experience of past experience also help as a motivator to the rest of the cast as well behind the scenes I think that one of the things that I, I most pride myself on as a director is that actors really enjoy working on our films. And um, wow. this, this is our sixth feature now. Um, I began as an actor. I'm still an actor. I love actors. And the way I approach actors is what would I want a director to say to me? How would I want a director to deal with me? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the, that's the ideology and the philosophy that I bring to my uh, interactions with my actors. And, um, and I think actors notice that. And, you know, there you, sometimes you have directors who are brilliant technical directors, but for them, actors are just pawns. They're just, you know, chess pieces that you move around, you know, they're glorified set pieces. Um, for me, the, the humanity of the performance and, and the relationships between the characters, these, this, this is the most important thing in your movie right? Mm -hmm. Characters and story and what the actors are bringing to the table. And you can have the most brilliant, fantastic tech in the world. And if you don't have that humanity and that performance, uh, it's your movie is going to fall flat. So for me, that's, that's absolutely paramount. And I think actors notice. And, and I think, you know, I've worked with some incredible performers. Rachel is, is, is of course one and, and, and William Sadler has been in two of my movies and Will Forsyth and um, Jeff Fahey and Christian Seidel and the, the, the wonderful John Cullum and Colin Cunningham. And, and the, you sort of, you know, the list goes on, Andrew Devov, um, Stephen Brand, and they, they, all of them, James Callis from Battlestar Galactica. I was a great fan of his work as Guy's Baltar and Battlestar and got him, cast him as the lead in my second film, The Hollow. Every single one of those actors, I think would come back and work with me again because they had a positive experience. And it's not because of the money I was able to pay them because it was <laughs> comparatively very little, you know, when, when they're used to working in these big studio shows. So the experience they had, that's what really matters. The, the, the actors at the end of the day, they wanna act, they wanna perform, they wanna inhabit complicated, conflict-laden characters, and they wanna be respected, they wanna be collaborative, they wanna be heard. And if you provide them that experience, they're going to keep coming back. It's not about the money at the end of the day. It's about the experience that you're able to provide them on set. Sure, and that, and that passion that you've showcased is phenomenal. <laughs> Man, I, I love that because it's just, just such a great way to go about a directing in general. Because, I mean, as you said, if you build up those relationships, those actors and actresses, they're what, gonna wanna come back and be like, right, okay, what's Miles working on next? Mm-hmm. And, you know, compared to maybe say other directors that they've worked with in the past, you know? Um, and one actually interesting thing I wanted to bring up in this interview, because I did a little bit of research before conducting this interview. Mm-hmm. And uh, last year on my channel, I actually did a Christmas special where I showcased like, a couple of different movies. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this year, I'm actually going to showcase a movie called Santa Jaws. Oh, man. That, I actually that movie follows before. me around like the plague. It's... I, I... I mean, maybe that's maybe that's not a good euphemism nowadays with COVID. But uh, yeah, what, let let's hear it. I want to hear about it. What do you yeah. think of Santa Jaws? <laughs> yeah, um, well, I haven't actually seen it yet, um, but I'm going to be watching the movie this year for my Christmas special, uh, and I thought it was really cool that I'll be having you on the channel and you are actually in that movie. <laughs> what are you uh, doing? You know, uh, the, this is a great group of people. Um, uh, Misty Tally, the director I've worked with on two films now, uh, two shark films, Santa Jaws and Mississippi River Sharks. Um, and Daniel Lewis, the producer of that film, they're really good folks. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the first roles I had uh, in feature films as an actor, uh, significant roles, speaking roles, were with Daniel cast me in some sci-fi original films a while back. Um including uh, Swamp Volcano and Weather Wars. Storm, maybe it became Storm War. I don't know. But anyway, Daniel and I go way back. Um, and the, the films are just, look, they're, it, it's silly as hell, but, but yeah. it, a lot of good people. 
everybody's having a good time. Everybody knows what they're doing. It's time nobody's taking it very seriously. But the fact of the matter is, people find it most thoroughly entertaining. It's it's fun escapist entertainment, um, and um, you know, I, it was it was it was a great thrilled to work on those films. They're much fun. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, uh, Santa Jaws in particular, like, I don't get, I mean, I, I haven't done, you know, I don't get recognized very much. You know, sometimes people will be like, I think I've seen you. In, but when I do, it seems to be a film like that. It's like, were you in Santa Jaws? I was just, <laughs> I was just having this conversation with on another interview where somebody was like, yeah, you know, I told my buddy that I was interviewing Miles Doliak, and he was like, "Wait a minute, Miles Doliak from Santa Jaws?" Um, wow! You know, people watch that stuff. You know, they there's kind of, they kind of become cult classics. Uh, I'm I'm honored to be part of Santa Jaws, and Daniel and Misty, you're you're very welcome for all this free press that you're getting right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just wanted to bring this up in the interview because I say I'm going to be checking it out for this year's Christmas special on my channel. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll certainly message you after I've seen it. Please, like, you know, please do. Course. Will do. Um, well, one question I've got as well, Miles, because um, I appreciate we've only got a little bit more time, mm -hmm. um, is when I've checked through your past um, work, so I've actually seen you in the Purge TV series as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, really, really enjoyed that series. And I've seen that you've done work on The Watchmen and American Horror Story. So with that kind of background work that you've had, how did that compare in terms of your role for Arthur, for Demigod? Um, I think that um, working on big shows and getting to some of the caliber of talent that, that, that I got to work with, I mean, Jessica, working with Jessica Lang on our Horror Story Tree show was one of the highlights of my entire career. I mean, what an absolute legend. Um, she's just a you know goddess of cinema. And, and getting to spend an evening watching her on a high emotional scene, um, if you know this question, uh, uh, clinic. And so when I've been on those shows and I watch these these legendary actors perform, Denzel Washington in Magnificent Seven, for example, or, or Jessica, um, you're just always taking mental notes. You know, you, you're 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 watching what they do. You're watching their process. You're watching the choices they make. And you think, okay, how can I incorporate this into my process? Because obviously they're doing something right. I mean, they've won Academy Awards <laughs> uh, yeah. and have had long, illustrious careers. Um, but I, I really am a student of movies. I'm a student of acting. I'm, I'm also a, a pretty good mimic. I mean, one of the reasons, the, one of the reasons that I'm pretty good at acting is I just have a good ear. I hear it. And I'm able to replicate it. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm one of those actors that. Um, I never feel like I'm too, I've been around long enough or too old to, to learn something new um, and, and, and just to take chances. And, and, and with the character of Arthur, you know, I think there's a lot going on. There's somebody that uh, is, he, for him, his daughter is his, his entire world. Um, and he's willing to do anything within his power to protect her. But then that puts him in this morally gray area um in this sort of survival of this situation um and he has to make a kind of impossible choice and i think that it uh, most of the I mean, the most interesting characters let's face it are morally gray i mean there's no you know they're not hero ones and they're everybody can be a hero and most be a villain given the situation and so i think that um it was, it was, it, Arthur was a fun character to play. Sorry, my, my dogs. Oh, it's barking, cool. barking at the mailman. I have a whole pack of, of wild dogs here. It's, it's a wonder they've been as quiet as they have, as long as they have. But, um, right. <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, those kinds of characters, I just, I, you know, they say it's always more fun to play the villain. Um, yeah. and there's a lot of, there's a lot of truth in that, but it's always, it's also, when you find the right cast and you find the right scene partners and those scene partners are Rachel Nichols or Johan Smiles or William Sadler or Lindsay Ann Williams or Elena Sanchez or whoever it might be, um, it just makes your job a lot easier. It, this is a, it's a collaborative, collaborative sport, you know, film sport. 
and um, and just every time I'm on set and I get to watch these wonderful performers do what they do and learn from them and to bounce ideas off of them, uh, I become better. And that's that's whether I'm the director or whether I'm just a small cog in the wheel on something like American Horror Story, I'm looking for ways to become better. Sure, sure. And going forward, are you wanting to go more in a director route? Or are you still open to doing both directing and acting? Or what, what kind of um, platform are you looking to move to next? I think at the end of the day, I'll continue to do both. Um, I, I have um, I have grown to... I, I Initially, I started directing movies so I could provide myself more opportunities as an actor, and so that I could tell the type of stories that I moved me and that I thought to be told. Um, right. But um, I've grown to love directing in its own right. Um, I I think acting will always be my first love, so I'm I'm always game for a you know a nice meaty acting role. But I'm going to keep directing. I, I I've just uh, Lindsay just completed a script we hope to be shooting sometime next year and. Um, so we're gonna, at the end of the day for me, it's just about continue, continuing, create, continuing to put stuff out there and hopefully good, good folks like you notice and support what we do. And, and that allows us to continue this thing, which is the great passion of our heart. Yeah, of course. And, um, you're absolutely welcome back on the channel anytime. Um, as I'd you. love to showcase more of your projects as they come up, because as I say, I really admire the direction in this movie. I say, I felt like as you clearly explained about the synopsis and the backstory of Demigod, it clearly goes to show that you had a pure passion for the subject matter and you just elevate that in this movie and it's showcased throughout. Um, so uh, what I'd also like to ask, Miles, is going forward, you said that you're working on a script going for next year. What other projects have you got coming out? Yo, Miles, are you there? Guys, I think we may have lost Miles. I'm not really too sure. Uh, give me two seconds, guys. So Miles um, may have just lost connection, but we'll temporarily see. Um, but just to let you guys know, Demigod is due to come out next week. So I'm assuming it is going to be available on multiple different platforms as well um so it'll certainly be one to check out so hey miles you back i'm back awesome <laughs> i'm not sure what happened there but i was just telling uh, anyone that's watching now after the fact that then we got his schedule to still come out next week so they they've got a heads up for anyone joining yeah um, october 15th in some theaters and on demand on actual vod forms itunes Fandango now, Google Play, Amazon, you name it, it'll it'll be there. And if you're in the UK, by the way, it's being distributed by Bulldog Distribution early January, uh, January I think of 2022. Uh, right. So so they so they have some grand plans as well. Uh, but if you're in North America, select theaters and and on demand on October 15th. Awesome. Awesome. So that will be really cool because uh, a lot of my audience is from the UK. I've also got some from the US and all over. So really good information. So thank you for that. And um, Miles, I've got one last question because, again, I appreciate that we've only got a little bit of time. Uh, my last question purely is uh, for yourself to kind of promote any uh, scripts, any directing or any acting uh, gigs or anything that you've got coming up. What, what can you tell us? Sure. First, um, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Miles underscore Doliac, where I, I'm always posting about what we're doing, our projects, and and, uh, and then, of course, I've got my dogs and my beloved New Orleans Saints. Um, yeah. But 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 anything I'm doing creatively, uh, you, can, you can follow me on Instagram or, or Twitter. Um, our project, our next script project, uh, is a film that Lindsay and I wrote that is uh, sort of I describe it as um, if you took a bomb back film like Marriage Story or Squid and the Whale and uh, combined it with a one car Y film like In the Mood for Love or Chunking Express or 2046 and maybe sprinkled a little Wes Anderson on top and then maybe an East Brand Brand. You know, that's, uh, it's, so it's, it's kind of um, um, 
re relationship drama with a musical edge and a bit of a bit of a thriller mm -hmm. element as well. And we've got Jeremy London attached to that. Jeremy has been hassling me for for quite a while to write him a lead role. We finally did, and and so we hope to shoot that with Jeremy next year. Um, I, I think it's gonna. I think hopefully blows lines uh, of a departure from what we did the last few films. Um, I'm producing a couple of projects as well over the course of the next year, and then um, uh, and then and then teaching students at Loyola University uh, Film Program in New Orleans, Louisiana. And teaching is a great love of mine as well, and um, and and trying to help young creative minds find their own voice and find their way into this crazy industry. And I, as I tell my students to the day, embrace who you are, embrace your own pain, embrace your own conflict and make your movie, whether you've got $5 or $50 million, uh, get your, get your vision out there get your voice heard. Um, and, and, and hopefully, you know, you're able to find an audience. Um, so that's ultimately, that's what it's about. And we're just, we're just continuing to create and stories that are meaningful to us and, um, and hope, uh, work with some real people. We've been very far to do that with teachers uh, and and we're going to continue to do so awesome well miles i'm going to be honest i'm really looking forward to your next work that you're working with Lindsay, as you mentioned with jeremy london mm -hmm. being attached to the main star i do also know that he was in this movie as well he was. Yep. <laughs> um, and yeah and it's just really cool also just to hear finally is that you also teach students as mm -hmm. well so it's not as if you're just doing, you know, directing and acting, you're also helping a younger generation or an older generation, whoever, to just find their passions and just go out there and do it. I really mm -hmm. admire that. Um, so, yeah, guys, so pretty much this is going to be a wrap-up of my interview with Miles Adoniak, and thank you, Miles, so much for your time. And honestly, guys, check out Demigod on October 15th and select this on video demand. And here in the UK, Miles has confirmed it's coming out probably possibly early January or say to February in case anything does happen. Mm. Uh, Miles, have you got any final words before we wrap up? Uh, Mike, I just want to thank you for supporting independent filmmakers. It's, it's, uh, the, the, the playing field is not exactly level. We can't compete with the students in terms of money and resources. So good people like you who support and promote what we do. You absolutely huge, so very much nearly uh, a first film. Of course, of course, no, and it, honestly, my has been my absolute pleasure talking to you and getting to know more about Demigod. Um, I have actually watched the film twice now, so uh, when it comes out in January, I'll certainly check it out once again. And I recommend any of my viewers or anyone who comes across this stream again, whether you're watching live now or after the fact, to check out the movie. But guys, uh, that is it for myself and Miles, and we will see you later. See you, sir. Thanks so much.